and welcome to our service this morning. We're keeping candle mass today, so hopefully you have got a candle handy. You will need that for later in the service. We start with a moment of quiet. We gather in the name of our loving God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas. Now we remember the day when he was presented to the temple. He was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified and we now come to him for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognised him as their Lord, and today we sing of his glory. We celebrate the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to Christmas and forward to Easter. The Spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light, he binds us all in unity. a collect special prayer for Candlemas. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. Jesus promised life to all. Walk, walk in the the dead were wakened by his call. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light, in the light, in the light of the Lord. A reading from Luke's Gospel. When the time came for their purification, according to the Lord of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, and they offered the sacrifice according to what is stated in the law, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous, devout, looking forward to consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death before he had see, seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence for all the peoples. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will oppose, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worships there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and began God and to speak about the, the child to all who were 
were looking for redemption of Jerusalem, they returned to Nazareth. When they had finished everything required by the Lord of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. My Jesus, love, our wounds are healed. Walk, walk in the light. The Father's kindness is revealed. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. Hello. Can you see me? I'm sitting in the dark. Let me see if I can find a torch. Oh, there we go. Look, I found one. Can you see me now? No, it's not a very good torch. I'll see if I can find a better one because this one is not really lighting up the room. Let's see what I can find. Ah, oh, this one's better. Look, you can start to see a bit of me. Not very much of what's around me. Can you tell what room I'm in yet? I've got a better torch here. Oh, look, this one's much better. Look at this. This torch, this torch will light up the whole room. And if I turn it off, a dark. What about if I shine it in your eyes? Does it hurt? Ah, it's bright. Yeah, yeah, it's bright. Oh, it's gone back to dark. Okay, so here I am, out of the darkness now, and I want to, to think about that sentence that it says, that Simeon says about Jesus. He says that Jesus will be a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for your glory to your people, Israel. Sitting in the darkness reminds us very quickly that we need light. It's pretty difficult to do anything in the dark. We don't have the right eyes for it. We're not bats, we're not owls. We weren't created to live in the darkness. And if I'm in too much darkness, I tend to start walking into things and it hurts because I hit the furniture. We're not really engineered for darkness. And I think that's where the association of darkness being things that are bad and light being things that are good comfort on, because we're not really made to live in the darkness. We're made to live in the light. That's kind of how our bodies are put together. So Jesus was called to bring light of revelation, to bring us from darkness into light. That's quite a good way of thinking about it. There's two little things I want us to think about today with about that being from darkness into light. And the first one is about how we can be that light of revelation. Because Jesus is not here anymore, not on earth. He doesn't have any hands or bodies as on earth, as that famous prayer says. He just has us. So one of the things that we can do in response to thinking about Jesus as the light of revelation is that we can be light in our community. We can be light for our planet. We can be people who choose to do things that make our planet a better place, a lighter place, a place that's better for humanity than it was before. And we can do that locally by looking out for our neighbours, by picking up litter. We can do it for our community by being generous and supporting projects that help other people in our community. And we can do it on a national scale, by, on a global scale, by reducing the amount of plastic that we use, by thinking about the impact that our actions can have. Are we bringing darkness into the world by what we do, or are we bringing light? And that is a really, really easy thing that we can think about doing to be the light of revelation in the world. And the other thing that we way that we can think about this is thinking about bringing light and revelation to ourselves and to our own experience. Because we each live in a world where we know what we know. You know, we've lived our own lives. We've grown up in 
uh, a particular family, in a particular uh, setting, in a particular context. My children know what it is to move house because they've moved. Well, a Lucy thinks she's as Lucy reckons it's eight times in eighteen years, which is quite quite a lot of moving. So she knows what it is to move house. That's part of her experience. And I think that we have an opportunity when we think about that light of revelation to think about how we can bring the experience of others into our own lives and how that can bring us revelation and understanding. And there's simple ways that we can do that. It doesn't have to be difficult ways. It could be things like uh, just occasionally buying a different newspaper. So we're just hearing stories from a different perspective that brings revelation. It could be, instead of choosing to read another David Walliams book, that we choose to read a book by someone who grew up in a different country to us, that's telling us a story about a world that's completely different from ours. It might be about choosing to watch a different television programme, finding one that you think, oh, I don't, I don't recognise anything in that. I don't I don't know anything about that country or I don't know anything about those people. I'm going to watch this television programme and hear the story of some different people. As we listen and open our hearts to hear different stories, different experiences of living in the world, we are allowing our, the light of revelation to come into our own lives. We're helping ourselves to understand more and to be better people, to be better humans in this world, to be people who are people of revelation, because we've tried, we've worked at it, we've invested a bit of time into hearing all sorts of different stories and letting ourselves be changed by those experiences, understanding what we don't understand as uh, many protesters say. I think that's a really, really important part of the story, that we can allow ourselves to experience that revelation that comes from experiencing someone else's story. So we can do things to bring the light of revelation into our community and into our world, and we can do things to bring the light of revelation into our own lives, experiencing different stories, going in different directions, looking for light in different places. Amen. The Spirit lives in you and me. Walk, walk in the light. His light will shine for all to see. Walk, walk in the light. Walk. now going to take a moment to think about that judgment about God who judges us with grace and mercy and Jesus who came to live on earth so that we could be saved. Hear the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness but shall have light of life. Therefore let us bring our sins to his light and confess them in penitence and faith. We're going to pray together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us affirm our faith together in the words of this creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The children are now going to lead us in our prayers with words and images they've chosen. Amen. Dear God, please help the people that have been enslaved and help them find the happiness in all of the badness. Amen. Dear God, we give thanks for shelter, food and water we are lucky enough to receive. As some don't have as much as us, some people are at wars, others don't have homes. Please bless them at this hard time. Amen. Dear God, please give your praise and love to all of the people in hospital. Amen. And so let us gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
So we're starting our Love Bursted campaign this weekend. So hopefully you found some hearts that you can stick in your window or maybe something covered in hearts. I've got some tissue paper covered in hearts, which I'm going to use uh, at church, at one of the church windows somehow. And I found some big glittery hearts that we're going to stick in our new window once we've moved into it. Um, so do join in with that if you can. Um, we're carrying on online. There will be resources coming out for Lent. They'll be with you in the next couple of weeks. And do continue to pray for all of those in our community to reach out to each other and to share in our community. And don't forget Zoofy or Zoom coffee, as we like to call it, after this at 11 o'clock on Sunday. It's been really, really joyful to have a few of us gather together. We don't stay long, normally not much more than half an hour. Um, and if you're worried about the technology, you can always get in touch with me and we can have a little practice before the event. All right. Uh, keep well. God bless. So for this part of our service, you need to have found your candle. This is uh, my candle in my new candlestick holder, which my brother gave me for Christmas. He's the master at slightly random things that you didn't know you wanted, but are rather beautiful. And this is my big angel, and I've got a slightly smaller one. So I'm going to start by saying a prayer, and then we're going to light our candle, and we're going to listen to the Nunc Dimittis, which is a beautiful piece of music, and it's based on the words that uh, Simeon said in the temple, so the, the, his words um, put to music. And usually we would surround the church, we might process around the church, and we would all gather together with our candles. But this year we're doing it apart, so we're going to have our candles alit while we listen to that piece of music. And then there's some words to say together with our candles, which take us from Christmas, and epiphany and the celebration of all of that and start to prepare us for the next part of the journey which is Lent and then Easter and the great tragedy and celebration that is Easter. So I'm going to say a prayer and then you're going to light a candle. So you need to have your matches or whatever you're going to use to light your candle ready. Lord God, the springing source of everlasting life, pour into the hearts of your faithful people the brilliance of your eternal splendour, that we, who by these kindling flames light up this temple to your glory, may have the darkness of our souls dispelled and so be counted worthy to stand before you in that eternal city where you live and reign, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, here we bring to an end the celebration of the Saviour's birth. Help us, in whom he has been born, to live his life that has no end. Here we have offered the Church's sacrifice of praise. Help us, who have received the bread of life, to be thankful for your gift. 
here, we have rejoiced with faithful Simeon and Anna. Help us, who have found the light in his temple, to trust in your eternal promises. Here, we have greeted the light of the world. Help us, who bear these candles, never to forsake the light of Christ. Here, we stand. Remembering our place of baptism. Help us, who are marked by the cross, to share the Lord's death and resurrection. Here we turn from Christ's birth to his passion. Help us, for whom Lent is near, to enter deeply into the Easter mystery. Here we bless one another in your name. Help us who now go in peace, to shine your light in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we blow out our candles. We say goodbye to Christmas and to Epiphany, and we start to prepare our hearts for Lent and Easter. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.